Greetings, today we will take a couple of steps beyond what we did yesterday in discussing chaotic, chaotic dynamical systems. We have already had some exposure to bifurcations and chaos and we met uh, Benoit Mandelbrot uh, in our previous class. And today we will talk about Mandelbrot sets which are named after him and these are very fascinating objects and you love the pictures. Now the essential idea that we discussed had a close connection with self similarity. Okay. So, here you see triangles on triangles on triangles on triangles. So, when you construct a triangle on the middle edge, on the middle one third, you are left with two one third pieces on the wings on the sides and those are then the smaller segments to which the first larger segment is reduced. So, you have the first segment which has got this length which is this original triangle. Then you construct a triangle on the middle and then you are left with four sides, four segments each of one third the size and then on each of these segments, each of these four segments, okay, the original segment has now been reduced and on each of these segments, you again carry out the same process. So, there are two elements over there, one is self similarity, the second is iteration. Okay. So, both of these have a combined effect, which leads to these fractal dimensions that we discussed in our previous class and the Koch curve is a great example of perfect infinite degree of self similarity. It is completely self similar, it is not like the coastal line of Great Britain or coastal line of India or any such place which is a physic which has got a physical boundary, because a physical boundary of any real physical object, any material object, it will have self similarity to a larger extent, but it will not be completely mathematically infinitely self similar. So, the Koch curve is the example that we discussed and using this we defined the fractal dimension as the ratio of these two logarithmic numbers and we recognize the fact that this ratio certainly does not have to be an integer. So, this is the generation of the Koch curve. This is an important aspect of chaos and we have met self similarity earlier in this logistic map, okay, where we met these bifurcations and then you have a repeat of these bifurcations. So, what you have is an oscillation of period 2, it doubles up to an oscillation of period 4 and then it branches again. So, there is yet another bifurcation and when you see this cascade of bifurcations, you notice that once again you have one common element which is self similarity. Okay. So, what Feigenbaum really discovered is the exact scaling factor at which this self similar behavior manifests itself. It was the ratio of these consecutive you know um, intervals of r, if you remember the definition of the Feigenbaum constant and it is in fact a scaling factor at which this self similarity appears. We also define what an orbit is, you begin with a certain seed value, you define a function on it and then you get a new value which becomes the seed value on which you operate by the same function and you get the next value of that particular parameter. So, it keeps changing 
you again you have an iterative process and this will generate a sequence of numbers which is an orbit. It may settle down to some fixed value, it might settle down to a set of values which repeat itself themselves in some sequence like the periodic orbit of an oscillator in the phase space and the orbit can be either a fixed point or it can be a, uh, a steady state fixed point or it can be a closed orbit which repeats itself. And we also considered some numerical examples in which we showed that if you have a function like defined by x square minus 2 then its orbit is a fixed point if the seed value is 0, but if the seed value is even slightly different from it if it is a small departure from 0 like 0 0.1 then you get completely random numbers. You, you get numbers we do not show any kind of regularity, but uh, you, you do not get the same kind of an orbit if you have a slightly different seed value. They do remain within the confines of plus 2 and minus 2, but within this range it is not easy to predict as to what the value will turn out to be. Whereas, if the seed value was only 0 then you know exactly that the function will settle down to the value 2 and it will remain fixed. So, what we have is you, be, you begin with a certain function, you get a new function you from the seed value. So, you take the seed value over here and on the seed value you operate by a certain function you get a new value and then this new value can become the seed value and you can iterate. So, this is some sort of an iterative procedure and this subject of chaotic dynamical systems is an intensely mathematical subject you need very high speed computers to get to operate these iterative you know steps to carry out this iterative mathematics and uh, you know some people make use of supercomputers and spend a lot of time getting doing this number crunching. So, it is mathematically and computationally very intensive subject. Now, there is a particular orbit which is of great interest in this subject which is called as the Mandelbrot set. This is named after Benoit Mandelbrot. What it is it again it can be defined in a very simple way and this is the theme we have carried from the very beginning that you deal with very simple systems, but they lead to extremely complex behavior. Okay. So, this is the complex behavior of very simple systems. The equation that you have in front of you is an extremely simple one. You begin with a seed value this is a complex number c, this is the seed value. So, this is the value at the 0 iteration and then the next value is defined by this relationship that the next value is given by the square of the previous value plus this constant which is the seed value that you began with. It is a very simple equation. right? Now, you will get as a result of this an orbit which is a sequence of complex numbers and these complex numbers can be identified by putting a point in the complex plane which is made up of a real axis and an imaginary axis. And the orbit will go from one complex number to the next to the next to the next and generate a sequence of complex numbers. Now, the corresponding point in the complex plane will therefore, travel in the complex plane and the question you can ask is will it remain in a bounded space of the complex plane or will it escape to infinity. Okay. Now, if it does remain bounded then the number c which was the seed value is considered to be a member of the Mandelbrot set. So, the Mandelbrot set is a set of all complex numbers z for which the sequence defined by the iteration z n plus 1 equal to z n square plus c remains bounded. It is a very simple definition. 
now you will see what kind of amazing results this leads to and you will then see that it has something to do with bifurcations that we talked about, it has something to do with the logistic map that we talked about, it has something to do with the cell similarity that we talked about, it has something to do with chaos that we talked about. Notice that if c is equal to 0, then z n is equal to 0 for all n and the sequence is just the complex number 0. Okay. If z is equal to i, then the sequence oscillates between i and i minus 1, i square root of minus 1. Okay. So, the sequence remains bounded, but it does not converge to a limit, it oscillates between i and i minus 1. Now, let us start doing it, now you could take a calculator and work this out, you know how to take the square of a complex number. So, there is a very simple process, but just to get the complete Mandelbrot set you really need powerful computers, because the amount of number crunching you have to do is huge and you will see that although you are dealing with a very simple expression. So, I am going to show you some of those results. So, what you are going to do is to iterate, get the next value and you have to keep carrying out these iterations, how many times we will figure out, but you have to carry out these iterations and at a certain point if you find that the value either will blow up or else it will remain bound in a certain part of the complex plane and if that happens you would say that it belongs to the Mandelbrot set. So, you are looking at the sequence which comes out of it, which is the orbit and you are asking this question, which values of the complex number c give orbits which do not escape, that is the question you are raising. If it escapes, then you exclude that complex number, if it does not, you include it as a part of the Mandelbrot set, because that is what defines the Mandelbrot set. Now, let us take two examples of area. There are two complex numbers, one this is minus 1.04039, this is the real part. The imaginary part is this, which is 0 0.2509294 times i, which is the square root of minus 1. The second complex number I am dealing with is the one shown in red, which is minus 0 0.1155989 this is the real part and the imaginary part i is sitting over here is i times this part which is 0 0.763940 which is the imaginary part of this. Now, if you work with this previous expression z square plus c, where c is either the blue number or the red number okay, and carry out this iterative process over and over and over and over again. And as you carry out these iterations, you get new complex numbers. So, you get this at the first iteration, this at the second, this at the third, this at the fourth and so on and you have to carry out these iterations n number of times. Okay. Now, notice that the sequence of numbers that you get, it sort of oscillates for both the red curve and the blue curve, the red curve is the one which describes the orbit that you get if the seed value is this, the blue curve is what you get if the seed value is this upper complex number. But then what happens is if you carry out these iterations further, okay, the one which had the blue seed blows up, it does not remain bounded whereas, the one which is given by the red curve, it remains in a bounded space. Okay. So, which means that the blue number, the blue seed that you begin with is not a part of the Mandelbrot set, but the red one is a part of the Mandelbrot set. 
Okay. Now, you know how to get the Mandelbrot set. Now, what happens is that in case the modulus of the complex number z happens to be greater than 2. Now, the modulus is a real number. Okay. It is the square root of the sum of the squares of the real part and the imaginary part. If this modulus of the complex number happens to be greater than 2, then it will always escape to infinity. Now, this is a small exercise which can be worked out as a homework problem. I will not discuss the proof, but if it exceeds 2, then it will escape to infinity, which means that this simplifies your effort, because all you have to check is that you can carry out a certain number of iterations and if you ever in a finite number of iterations you find that the complex number has got a modulus which is larger than 2, then you can already exclude it, because then it is guaranteed that it will escape to infinity. So, you do not have to proceed with that iterative procedure any further. So, that simplifies your search for those seed values whose orbits will generate the Mandelbrot set. So, you do not have to wait till it really goes to infinity, you just have to see if it ever goes to such a value whose modulus would exceed 2. Now, how many times do you need to iterate to check this out? Usually, this number is not very large. As it turns out, and this comes from practical experience, it is not that you have to do it infinite times, it is not that you have to do it a thousand times or a hundred times, you have to do it a few times okay, and then you are able to quickly check out that okay, is if it is going to have a modulus whose value will exceed 2 and then you can just throw it out, because that is not the number you are looking for, for the Mandelbrot set. Now, the Mandelbrot set in fact, is a fractal you know what a fractal is, it displays self similarity at various scales, we have already met this. And when you magnify this, you get structures which look very similar to what you had seen on a larger scale. Now, that is a very characteristic feature of a fractal and a Mandelbrot set in fact, does have that feature, but unlike the Koch curve whose self similarity is complete, it is a mathematical curve, so is this, but there is a little difference. In this case, the small scale details are not completely identical to the large scale details. Uh, you will again see it when I show you some examples. So, there are differences which really makes the Mandelbrot set extremely complex, in fact, infinitely complex. So, this is the, the process is simple, all we are doing is multiplying complex numbers and this is what you get for the Mandelbrot set. All points that you see, which are shown and it is a dense picture. Okay. Notice that everything remains confined to a compact space, all points have got a modulus which remains confined. Okay. These complex numbers remain in a bounded space, the first major shape is this cardioid and you know what a cardioid is, it is defined by this function. Okay. You can get it by following the trajectory of the circle on a circle, which is rotating like this, that is what generates a cardioid. Okay. It has, it can be described by this relationship between r and theta. So, this is the cardioid and you see that there is this major cardioid, but then outside this cardioid, there are a number of decorations. They are in fact, called as decorations. Okay. So, there are these bulbs 
and then there are other bulbs which are attached to these bulbs. And now you are going to start looking at it in detail, zoom into this and as you zoom into this just the way as you would zoom into a Koch curve, you would see more and more self similarity. But in this case you will see more and more similarity yet there will be some difference. So, in that sense it is somewhat different. So, this is a Mandelbrot set, it has got this amazing shape. Now, let us see some further detail. Now, what happens is that if you see closely at the at these boundaries, okay, you will see that there are these nerves kind of thing or fibers okay, and there are the serpentine figures which come out of it. So, there are these small things which come out of these exterior bunds okay. and then um, uh, you, you have some more complex behavior and if you zoom in on any one of these you are going to see more structure. So, what you will start beginning to see that there are these serpentine shapes, then they some of these shapes look like a seahorse tail and then if you start looking into these details, you will see more structure and now you can see how beautiful shapes you get out of this, it is really amazing. Now, Hubbard and Dowdy, they proved that the set is connected by very thin filaments okay, to the eye it might appear as if some of the points are not connected, not so, they are all connected by thin filaments. Okay. They may not show up on a certain scale, but if you magnify, if you zoom in, you will see them. And in fact, there is a theorem proved by Hubbard and Audi that the set is actually connected by very thin filaments. I already mentioned that there are these decorations or bulbs. The main cardioid is the primary bulb and then what you have is a number of these secondary bulbs which are attached to that which are known as decorations. Now, we have studied the logistic map in one of our early earlier classes and now we have described what a Mandelbrot set is. There are a large number of Mandelbrot set beautiful pictures, they are in the public domain, you can download them from Wikipedia if you like or you can download them from, if you just google Mandelbrot set you will be led to God knows how many websites and you know people enjoy doing arithmetic and number crunching uh, with this simple complex uh, number algebra. All you have to do is to multiply the complex numbers and if you write a program then it is just a one step thing to uh, generate the iterative process. But of course, uh, the programming becomes very challenging because then you what you do next is to add colors to these bulbs. Okay. They will bring out the detailed structure because otherwise everything is in black and white and you do not really see the structure. So, if you then attach a different color to different pixels, then you will start to see the details of the structure. The question we are asking over here is that we studied the logistic map, we have also studied the Mandelbrot set is there any relationship between these two. Okay. Now, it turns out that there is a relation and a relationship which is very simple, very straightforward and it follows the Feigenbaum constant, here it is. If you just place these figures on top of each other, you know that these vertical lines, I have shown that this bifurcation diagram 
moving from right to left rather than from left to right as we discussed earlier right that is the only thing we have done right. But the scaling factor the mathematics remains invariant and you notice that if you look at the major intercepts of the Mandelbrot set with the real axis, okay, they fall along the same segments of these vertical lines whose intervals in successive segments generate a, ra a ratio which is the Feigenbaum constant. Now, that is how close they are related. So, the Mandelbrot set actually intersects with the real axis in the interval minus 2 and 0 0.25. This is much clearer in the previous figure, which I have taken from Wikipedia. Uh, this one, the intercept here is minus 2 on the real axis, the intercept here on the real axis is 0 0.025. Okay. No, sorry, it is 0 0.25, not 0 0.025. There this needs to be corrected. This is 0 0.25. Okay, this is 1 and a quarter of this is where it intersects. So, this remains uh, these, these are the intercepts on the real axis and if you now see these intersects with the real axis, the, the, these I already showed you minus 2 and 0.25 and the intersection points of the real axis, they have a 1 to 1 correspondence as you can see from this figure with the parameter r of the logistic map. Okay, we, we generated the logistic map by changing the value of r and there is a direct relationship between the intersection points of the real axis with the parameter r and that relationship is given over here. You do not really have to write it down, you if you just google these things you will get it very easily on the internet and there are some very fascinating books on Mandelbrot sets and chaos and I will give you some of the references toward the end of this class when you can have those references as well. But you notice that the relationship is so simple, right? the relationship between the complex number c and r is given by what you see on the screen and it is a very simple relationship connected with the intersection points on the real axis and that is the reason why you get the same kind of scaling factor in the uh, which is defined by the Feigenbaum constant. So, how do you generate the Mandelbrot set? The first thing to do is to set up equivalence between pixel coordinates and complex numbers, okay? because this is very intense computer graphics is used to generate these plots. And then have a color code, which is linked to these. So, now can you see this beautiful figure. Okay? So, to highlight the boundaries, you know this particular uh, programmer, this is um, one of the very many that you will find already, but you can generate your own. And notice how beautiful it looks because the boundaries are very nicely highlighted by choosing a color for that corresponding pixel. But then there are details in every part of this figure, every boundary will have more detail, because you are going to see this self similarity as you zoom in just the way you found it in the Koch curve. So, let us see how it looks like. Now, this is the Mandelbrot set, there are various points and they have got specific names. So, for example, there is a point over here, which is called as a seahorse valley and these are the coordinates in the complex plane for that. Then there is a point number 2, which is called as the elephant value, whose coordinates are 0 0.275 and 0. And then there are other points, which have got specific values. These are just the real part and the imaginary part. So, those coordinates are given. And then if you start looking at some details, 
So, if, 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 if you zoom in on a seahorse valley for example, in, in, in this part, then you can get a detailed structure and then you zoom in further, you get some more detail, you zoom in further and you see that inside this there is more structure. And this seems like endless, it is really amazing. In fact, there is a very nice uh, song which is composed by Jonathan Coulton, you will get it on the YouTube. So, if you just Google uh, Coulton's uh, song on Mandelbrot's uh, set, you do not have to write down this link, you will get it easily and enjoy it. Um, there are a number of uh, Mandelbrot uh, you know figures, which are available on the internet. It is a great source for uh, you know just developing your basic interest and um, intuition about the Mandelbrot sets. But of course, internet is always a source that you should re use with a lot of caution. So, that is a different story. So, let me highlight a few properties of the Mandelbrot set. It is connected, I already mentioned this. There are no disconnected islands, okay. everything is connected. The area is of course, finite, you actually saw it in a finite part of the complex plane. Okay. But the perimeter, the length of the border is infinite. This would remind you of the Koch curve. And if you take any part of the border, zoom in, you will find more of the border, you will see more structure and the border will have so much information in it. It in fact, has huge amount of information in it, that you zero in and zoom into any small part of the border, you will again see huge amount of information. So, it really has infinite detail. Now, here are some other you know objects, which will remind you of self similarity, uh, it is not just the cauliflower, but the internal structure of the lungs, graphs of stuff market data. Many of these things have got something in common. So, if you study the Mandelbrot set and examine the behavior, then from the mathematical forms, you can study many other branches of physics chemistry, various sciences, biology, finance, economics, what not. And if this is what science is about, that you find mechanisms to study these, then studying the Mandelbrot set obviously has a large number of applications, which is why there is so much interest in this field. I will like to show some pictures. Uh, there is a very lovely video, which is available, um, you, you, you can uh, get it even on a DVD, which is John Hubbard's video, uh, but I will show you some still pictures first, just to get some general idea. So, here you begin with the Mandelbrot set, can you see that? Right. Now, what you have done in the second slide is to zoom in in the central part of the previous slide. So, every time I show you the next picture, it will be a magnification of the central portion of the previous one. And you already see that this is the magnification of the central portion of the previous picture. Now, let us do it again and this is what I had mentioned earlier, that as you zoom in, you see more and more detail to such an extent that you have infinite detail over there. Look at this now, we have enlarged this further, this is 
a magnification of the central part. Let us go further. Okay. Now, what is in the central portion has been selected for magnification. So, this part now begins to appear like this and notice that these edges at the boundary, okay, what looks like fibers or the serpentine kind of shapes. Okay. Now, watch the structure of these serpentine shapes. What is going to come out of it is something which even after seeing it, means I have obviously seen all these things. It is hard to believe that okay, this is what is going to come out of this, but it actually happens. So, let us zoom in further. You get some further detail over here and you begin to see these serpentine shapes. Right. Now, you have zoomed in on this part. So, so these serpentine extensions which come out of these bulbs, these decorations and now you see that these decoration is a very appropriate name, because they really look so beautiful. And now, you are beginning to see some further structure and does this look anything like what you have ever seen earlier? I mean including in the few minutes when we started showing the Mandelbrot sets, not yet at least, right? it is also different. So, now we have zoomed in again on this middle picture, middle part. Okay, we have zoomed in again on this middle part, so here is the middle part and that is now beginning to look larger. Okay. Now, zoom in on this again it becomes like this, okay. enlarge this further, zoom in, see how beautiful it is, okay. see how much structure is there, you did not expect it when you just saw the first one, did you, but now that we are here, you see how much structure there is. But you will also see self similarity. Have you seen the self similarity yet? Not quite, but you will. Let us look at the next one. Here it is. This is the next one. What you have done is to zoom in on the central part, which is this. This is the middle part. Okay. This is the one on which you have zoomed in. It generates this pattern, and maybe you notice that there is some black spot over here and watch it grow. Okay. Watch it grow, because that is the one on which you are going to zoom in now. So, it is already beginning to look like the Mandelbrot set that you began with and now you recognize the self similarity. Okay. Zoom in further, there you are. Go further more familiar now. right? Go further and this is the kind of thing that happens, that you zoom in and this is the self similarity and self similarity reappears at a certain scaling factor and we have seen how this is connected with the logistic map and uh, here is another uh, set of pictures of the same thing. So, uh, once again, we are zooming in the central portion, okay? but these are slightly bigger slides, so I think you can see it more closely. So, now we have zoomed in on this central part. So, this is the part we are zooming in. Okay? So, we see more detail over here. Now, we are going to zoom in over here. So, you begin to see this. Okay? Now, you get this one of these, the serpentine pictures and then if you watch this grow further, this is the one that you had, you watch it grow further, it becomes, you, you zoom in, you look at more detail and then there is a beautiful picture, but then there is something in the center over here and it is going to grow on you as you watch it, there it is and you see that the Mandelbrot set 
that you began with, just the same kind of picture starts coming out of it. The only thing is that there is a different scale factor which is involved. So, this is really amazing, these are very fascinating objects and uh, I would like to uh, uh, draw your attention to some links on the YouTube, you can, you can get, uh, there are some very nice, you know, movies and there is one that we downloaded uh, for demonstration over here. What you really see in this video is infinite detail in the decorations and as you zoom in, essentially what you are doing is you are iterating and you are carrying out further and further iterations and there is very challenging programming which is involved in this because you must associate some colors with these pixels so that it really highlights these features and make them look so beautiful. Um, for us, these are extremely beautiful pictures that you can generate uh, using Mandelbrot sets. And what you see is that as you zoom in, what you have as decorations which are on the boundary or the border of the first Mandelbrot set that you started out with, but it has got so much information inside it that when you zoom in you begin to see these extensions, these fibers and these fibers have got some central part and you zoom in on that and what comes out of it if you zoom in further is a shape, a form which looks exactly like what you really began with. Now, this statement really needs to be qualified it does look like the Mandelbrot set that you began with, yet it is different. This is not infinitely self similar. So, it has got a very complex behavior and uh, I will uh, uh, conclude uh, this class with uh, a few references which uh, you might want to read from. Um, James Gleick of course, has an excellent book and uh, now later editions have also come out. So, the first edition came in the 80s and uh, then uh, Lawrence has got a very nice book on the essence of chaos and Devaney's book is very nice. This is a first course on chaotic dynamical systems, which you might like to read. Uh, there is a again uh, some very beautiful pictures in this Pidgen and Richter's book, The Beauty of Fractals. And then of course, as I mentioned during our discussion that the internet itself is a great source. Uh, you always have to uh, use internet with a lot of caution. Um, so, never trust it fully, but then it is a great source. It is a great source and I certainly recommend it. So, I am not one of those who will say that, okay, do not ever learn from the internet. Yes, you may, but use caution. So, uh, with that, um, uh, we conclude this discussion on uh, chaotic uh, dynamical systems. Um, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of this uh, series of topics that we did as special topics or select topics in classical mechanics. And in the next class, uh, I will generally provide a general overview of what exactly is the scope of classical mechanics and also what the limitations are. So, that will pretty much conclude this short course, uh, which I have personally enjoyed very much. Uh, I have learnt a lot while preparing for these classes myself. And I hope that at least some of you have been able to learn at least some during this course. So, thank you all very much. If there are any questions, I will be very happy to take them.
otherwise it's goodbye for now in the logistic map also this self similarity it is repeated yes as we go along the r it is it is it is it is that that's the common feature between the mandelbrot set and the logistic map that is the reason you see that the there is a scaling factor the feigenbaum constant appears uh, it it appears in the mandelbrot set through the points of the intersection of the mandelbrot set with the real axis so that's the connection any other question if not it is goodbye for now and then we'll take a short break and then i will summarize the scope and limitations of classical mechanics yeah okay thank you <coughs>